What's up guys, Ryan here at Signature Edits, and inside of this Lightroom tutorial, you're going to get the chance to edit along with me in this video. So, what that means is we're editing some landscapes, some portraits, some different animal shots today, but all of these photos are actually uploaded online to signatureedits.com slash free dash raw dash photos. They were shared by awesome photographers like you who want to just pay it forward and help you get to know Lightroom better. So I'm inside of Adobe Lightroom CC today. Whether you're on Lightroom Classic, Lightroom CC, or editing on your phone or your iPad, you're going to learn some great stuff here, especially if you can apply this by trying it yourself. So go ahead, grab those free raw files, and then I will see you on the other side of this intro. Okay, so by now you've gone, you've downloaded those photos, hopefully, or you've just grabbed a snack because I'm so entertaining to watch, you just don't even want to do anything but stare at my awesome edits all day. I understand. Me too. So with further ado out of the way, we're going to just dive in right away to this landscape photo. So the first thing I like to do before I actually start editing is just sort of in my head say, okay, what am I going to need to adjust here? Obviously, we've got a sky that is very bright. We've got some highlights in the background with this cliff that is really, really nice lighting, but it's still very bright. Then we've got shadows in the foreground. So we're going to just start by evening out the light and getting things where we want at first. Then we're going to apply our creative edits after. That's kind of the best way to approach it. First, you want to fix the light, fix the things that need fixing, and then you want to apply your creative touches after that. It's just a more kind of uh, logical way of going about things. So the strategy you employ is going to save you some time when it comes to your actual editing. All right, so let's start by heading over here to this adjustment brush thing. I'm going to hit select sky, and Lightroom is going to auto detect the sky. Now, if you don't have this in your version of Lightroom, it might mean that you just need to upgrade uh, to a newer version. If you don't have this, you could do it by auto masking. Go to create mask, select brush, and then you'd make sure auto mask is turned on and just brush on the sky. I'm going to do this because it's faster. So I'm going to take my exposure down, and the easiest way to add blue to the sky is just go down to your white balance. So here where it says temperature, I'm going to grab that, take that towards blue. Bam. See how much blue I just added to the sky? Now you have to be careful because if you take this down too far, your eye's going to know. So you can look at this and say, okay, it's blue, but it's way too dark. It just looks unnatural. That's because I took it further down in terms of luminosity. It's darker than the cliffs underneath it. So if I take my exposure back up a little bit, you can see it starts to feel a little bit more normal. So somewhere around there is probably more natural. And if we want to add even more color, of course, you can grab your little hue panel, play with that, or hit this little colorize button and add whatever color you wish to that sky. So let's make it real nice and blue, something like that. Then I also like to take my highlights up if there's clouds and shadows down. And you can even add a little bit of clarity, and that's going to enhance whatever clouds are in this sky. In this case, the sky's pretty hazy, and so that's not going to do a whole lot for us. But if I go back by hitting Command-Z a couple times, you can see it's adding a little bit of depth and dimension by brightening up the white areas and kind of enhancing it a little bit. Okay, so here's before. And here's after. Looks really great. We've added a nice pop of color. Now you might not want to add that, or you might. It's up to you. But you can practice. It's a great thing to try. Next, we're going to try and mask out the foreground, which is all in shadow. So this is a really good practice image for just figuring out your auto masking, all of these different tools that you can use. So let's try select subject. Sometimes Lightroom will actually know what you're going for, especially if there's a person in the photo. Other times Lightroom will say, I have no idea what you're trying to get. So in this case, it said, this is your subject over here, this part of the cliff. So that's not going to work for us. So let's just delete that. Delete mask two. And we're going to head over to create new mask, brush. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold shift on my keyboard. And then I can scroll up or down on my mouse slash trackpad. And you can see that it's adjusting the feather. I want my feather kind of smaller. Now feather is just the gradient, the gradual change from 100% opacity in the middle of this brush to that feather is going all the way down to zero. So by doing that, you can get, you see how we've got a nice haze going on? It's feathering. It's sort of blending that mask in. Whereas if you take that feather all the way down, you're not going to have any feathering. It's not going to blend. So just depending on what you want to do, that's what you're going to apply. So let's just delete that. Take my feather up a little bit. And then I'm going to go down here and look for my auto mask which I've forgotten inside of Lightroom CC. You don't have auto mask because Lightroom's weird. It's like, we're going to create a new version of Lightroom, but we're going to not have all of the features that the old version has. So that's okay. We're just going to do without. I'm going to do a decent job of masking out this shadow area. And because we don't have auto mask, I'm going to just try and blend it a little bit and not try and get it exactly perfect. So I took my feather up by holding shift on my keyboard and then scrolling up on my mouse wheel. 
Try and remember those keyboard shortcuts as it will come in handy as you're learning to edit. It just makes things a lot faster than every time you go half over here and have to adjust things. And if you are wondering where that feather is option optional, <laughs> where you can get that option, it's over here in the little panel here. You just hit that little arrow and now you have feather. Flow is how fast your ink comes out. If you're painting, think about it that way. And density is whether it's 100% opacity, 0% opacity. don't know why it says a density instead of opacity. That would make more sense. Anyways, so I selected that. Now you can see I can add some exposure. I like to do it like way too far. And then that way it'll show me exactly where my mask is. And I can go in, make my brush a little smaller. And then just kind of fine tune it. Because there's a couple areas here that I didn't hit that I missed. So we're going to go in like that. Now the thing is, when you're not using auto masking, you're doing this manually, you're not going to be able to push it as far as if you had a perfect mask. Since this mask isn't perfect, you can see I have to be more subtle in what I'm actually applying. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my exposure up, but only a little bit. I'm going to take my highlights up and my whites up. And I'm doing that instead of the exposure because that's going to feel a lot more natural. If I took everything up, including the shadows, it's going to feel weird. It doesn't look right. But if I just take the highlights up and the whites up, those are the naturally bright parts of the image. So by enhancing them, we're just adding some contrast, a little bit of pop to the image, not making it overly, like, way too bright. Okay, next thing, I could take my contrast up a little bit and then take my exposure up. It's going to do kind of the same idea where it's going to take... The shadows make them darker, take the highlights, make them a little bit brighter. So here's before that mask, and here's after. So you can see it's still pretty subtle. We've kept the contrast feeling natural and the same. It's just we've made everything brighter. Now what I can do is grab this mask, right-click here on these three little dots, and select Duplicate. By doing that, obviously we're duplicating our effect, and that's where you're really going to see how terrible my mask is in the top right. So if I press O, it'll show me the overlay of that mask. I can go in, hold Alt on my keyboard, and that's going to actually toggle between my brush and my eraser. So by holding down Alt, I now have my eraser, and I can erase the mask off of the sky here and kind of clean it up. Okay, press O again. Voila. Try and recenter this photo. <laughs> Zoom back in. Okay, so it's still a kind of messy mask. You can see I'm going to need to fix that a little bit more. So let's go in here. I got this one, which I kind of cleaned up. And then we've got this other one, which I did not, so I'll go in there again. Okay, press O again. And you can see here's without those masks, and here's with. So we've brightened things up without making it look like we've edited it too much. Now, the only th other thing to be aware of here is that when we brighten an area that's normally in shadow, light, depending on whether it's in daylight or shadow, cloudy, indoors, right, it's going to be a different temperature. Now, shadows tend to be cooler. So as you brighten up your shadows, you're going to notice more and more that these colors aren't matching between the background here with the cliffs in the sun and the foreground here with this shaded area. So I'm going to have to take my temperature up to match the white balance, because as I make it brighter, it's going to become more and more obvious. I am going to need to Dial in this mask a little bit more. Or it's just going to feel weird. Okay, so we got that. Here's before, here's after. Now, other things in this image that I do think need to be fixed, other than the fact that my mask could still be cleaned up a little bit, uh, we're going to go over to this Band-Aid, and I'm going to try and get rid of this metal bridge, because I think it kind of just does not add to the photo. So I'm going to click once. Use the spot removal tool. Something like that seems to align pretty well. You can turn your feather up. That'll help it blend a little bit. There you go. Before, after. Okay, good enough. You can practice, figure out what you like in that photo, and post it on your Instagram. Tag me at Signature Edits Go, and I can actually see what you come up with. Okay, let's go to the next one. we got a nice portrait here. Okay, first things that we're going to assess. Um, her skin needs to be cleaned up. So we're going to make sure we do that. Overall, we've got a really high contrast photo, so I'm going to want to dial back the contrast to make things softer. Take my highlights back a little bit too. And increase the shadows. So I'm just making this photo really, really fat. Flat, <laughs> not fat. Then we're going to add some pop back to it later. Okay, so I've got my light adjusted. So here's before. 
here's after. I took all the contrast away. We're going to add it back in a second. So I can take my blacks down a little bit. That's fine. And it looks like we also have a lot of noise in this photo that we're going to have to fix as well. So let's head over to our tone curve. I'm going to just add some pop into this image by taking my mid-tones down a little bit, my shadows down a little bit. And then I'm going to take the white point down as well. And that hopefully is just going to give me a creamier highlight rather than making it feel really, really bright. So look at this little orb here of the sun. Here's when the white point is white. Here's when the white point is more of like a bright gray. See how it blends better? It's not quite so harsh. So we're just going to stick with that. I'm going to take my overall exposure up a little. So here's before, here's after. And now we can just blend that contrast back in a little bit. Keep the highlights down before, after. So we've brightened her up. We've made the sky a little bit more creamy. Now we can go ahead and grab some adjustment brushes and fix her skin. So we're going to go to brush rather than select subject because I'm just doing a little specific area in here. I'm going to grab the area that I want to clean up. And then I'm going to take the contrast down a little bit basically going to smooth out her skin, so texture down, clarity down, and dehaze down a little bit. Not too much, or it's going to look really weird. Sharpness way down. You can even take stuff like more and defringe, noise reduction. We just want to make things really, really fuzzy. Good. And then any area that doesn't need to be sharp, I can just brush on top. Mm -hmm. Like that. So here's before and here's after. Okay. Now I'm going to grab another brush. I might even duplicate it so we can just make her skin even softer. Okay. Now you do need to be careful because you can see that I went over onto her nose and it's just not blended very well. So make sure you zoom in when you do this. Of course, Lightroom is frozen, so we'll wait for it to unfreeze. Then you can see the spot on her hair that I went over. Just not going to work when we duplicate the mask. So we're going to delete it and not push it quite so far. Oh, boy. Try this again. <laughs> delete. Okay. And then dial back this effect because it's definitely too intense. And for some reason, Lightroom absolutely hates me right now. It's going so slow. Hello, come on. You stupid thing. Okay, that, that is not working right there. So let's make another brush, try this again, see why Lightroom isn't doing what it's supposed to do. Doo, 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 doo. And what I'm gonna try instead is I'm gonna go over her entire face like this, and then I'm just gonna sharpen stuff after, and then that way my mask won't be so um, obvious. It won't need to be so accurate. So we'll zoom out all of her skin, we're just gonna cover, good. And we're going to do the same thing again. We'll take our contrast down, texture down, clarity down, dehaze down a little bit, sharpness down. Okay. Now I'm going to create another mask. We're going to go to our brush, and then we're going to grab all the areas we want to sharpen back again. So eyebrow, eyelash, this entire line of her face being silhouetted, her lips, glasses. Okay, I'm going to take that, we're going to take our texture up a little bit, clarity up a little bit, sharpness up a little bit. Okay, so here's before, here's after. Okay, that may be a little bit of contrast. little bit of white, 
and a little bit of saturation. Okay, now let's talk color because this image has so many different colors going on. I feel like it would really benefit from some focus. So we're going to say, okay, which colors are important here? Which ones are kind of distracting? For me, I think it's just a matter of having less color overall. So I'm going to start by taking the blues and take the saturation out. Okay. Purples, we'll try the same thing. Pinks are pretty integral, but our yellows, maybe we could try desaturating those a little bit. And our greens. Okay, so here's before, after, and you can see just before and after the color mix. I'm going to take the luminance of the oranges up a little bit. And it really just depends at this point, like what creatively you want to do. Definitely her skin is still not fixed, so we'll keep working on that. We can use our blemish brush, which is going to do a horrible job. Lightroom. Okay, you can make a smaller point, and then Lightroom will do a better job, hopefully, of auto-fixing these blemishes. Mm -hmm. I'm just doing this very quickly. You get the point. Something like that. And because she's not wearing earrings, I could also get rid of her piercing. Okay, looking better before, after. Now we could keep massaging this, or I could keep showing you some other edits and different photos. So I think, I think we're going to bypass. We go down here to our detail, make sure you fix stuff like adding some noise reduction. little sharpening. Add the contrast back in that we lost before. Now here's one thing that might be interesting. We could go to our adjustment brush. Go to select subject, see if Lightroom will grab it properly. There we go. Not bad, not bad. So we can actually make that slightly brighter. Increase the highlights and the whites on our subject. And then we can darken everything else down, which is going to get us Slightly more pop in the photo. So here's before, here's after. Before, after. Okay, so now we have a really, really beautiful engagement shoot of some kind. It looks like if we zoom in that our couple, sadly, was not quite in focus, but we can fix that. That's no big deal. I'm going to grab an adjustment brush, go select subject, and see what Lightroom does. Oh, we got lucky. Perfect. We're going to add our texture in there, a little bit of clarity, a little sharpness, a little dehaze. Okay, that's looking much better. Here's before, here's after. So they're now just popping out of the background. Okay, so we got so much color, so many options here. What I really want to do is just make this purple pop. So let's go down to our color mixer. You're going to notice I'm not fussing around with all the stuff at the top of this photo. I'm not adjusting the exposure to the contrast because that stuff actually looks pretty good to me. It's pretty close. It really depends what you want in the photo, but it doesn't mean you have to edit every single thing. Every option has to be adjusted in every single shot. So we're going to take our purples and our pinks, the saturation up, and just see what we're working with. Okay. Now if we want to add a little pop, sometimes actually taking the luminance down will make the color more visible. In this case, it's okay. Not amazing. It's almost like we need to add some color. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a adjustment brush. Go to brush. I'm going to zoom in on these flowers. And I'm going to attempt. Actually, let's do a color range. That's going to be way better. So I've got a color range, and we're going to select this purple and just hit O so I can see my mask. You're going to see that I've accidentally added it onto my subject mask, so we're just going to undo that. Uh, do, 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 delete. We're going to go create new mask and then color range. Perfect. We don't want it added onto our subject mask. We want it separate. So now we're going to tap on the purple in this photo. And if we hit add, we can actually add another color here. Perfect. So now we've got all the pinks and the purples in the image. Now the only problem is it looks like we've also selected our couple at the same time. So that 
That right there is slightly too bad. So what we're going to have to do is just roll with it. We've got our mask. Now we can adjust the temperature of that mask towards purple, and that's going to add purple to it. We can even take it towards blue a little bit. That'll add some bluish pink purple. And then we can go to our colorize, select a color we want to add, and now we've got a whole bunch of purple pop in that image. So if I press O to show and hide my mask, you can see here's before and here's after. We've added so much purple. The only problem is that the rest of the photo, that might actually work and it looks okay, but our subject looks really purple. <laughs> so we're gonna have to just counteract that by going to our subject mask and selecting it. Press O to see that we've got our right subject selected. Press O again to hide it. And now we're just going to do the exact opposite. We're going to take our tint towards green a little bit and our temperature towards yellow, not that far, a little bit, just to counteract what we did in that other mask. We're gonna to go to our colorize and the opposite of magenta is green. So we're going to try and shift away from the magenta that we added, just like that. Now when we zoom out, our couple looks kind of normal again. We've got our nice purple background, added a lot of color and pop. So now, now we can do some fun stuff. We can add some pop to the image overall, do all sorts of things. So let's start by going back to our main adjustment brush. We're gonna take our subjects, exposure up, and then I'm gonna go back to my main photo and take the exposure down. So in effect, our subject remains the same amount of brightness, but our overall photo is a little bit darker. Add some pop. Then I'm gonna add some contrast. Maybe even a little bit of vibrance. That's gonna make the greens nice and bright. And then this, I don't know what it is, a fence or something in the foreground. I think it's actually a really interesting element in the photo, but it's too dark. So what I'm gonna do is go to our brush again. We're gonna grab a brush, shoot, like that. And you can see I've done the world's best job at brushing this photo. Take the exposure up a little bit. Or, in fact, let's take the highlights and the whites up a little bit instead. That'll be more effective and less noticeable. So here's before and here's after, just a little bit. And here's our photo overall, before, after. Now there's one last thing that I think might be really cool with this shot. It looks like we've got a nice sunset. It's hitting the trees in the background. I don't know where the sun is in the photo, but I do believe it'd be amazing if we added a sun flare. So let's go to our masks once more. We're gonna grab a radial gradient. I'm gonna click and drag, and I'm gonna make a giant sun. That's what I'm doing. I'm gonna put it somewhere over here because I feel like the trees are golden over here and it'll just add it in a way that is believable and realistic. I'm going to take my contrast down, highlights down, exposure up. Then I'm going to add a whole bunch of yellow and pink. We're going to have a nice pink sunset. Then you can take your texture and your clarity and your dehaze down. And it's just a matter of dialing this in until it feels more realistic. So it's going to change depending on the photo. But something like this is getting closer. To what I want right around there and then you can go to colorize and let's say it's a really pink sunset just see what works somewhere around there feels pretty good so in the end here's before and here's after all inside a Lightroom, no Photoshop, added a whole bunch of color. You can just dial that in. That might have been a little bit too extreme with adding the color to the flowers but I like it. I'm digging it so I'm gonna move on. Okie doke. Later, Lightroom, later. Let's, yeah, just leave me alone. <laughs> Let's head over here. I've got a beautiful, beautiful shot. Now, the nice thing is when you take a nice photo in camera, editing it becomes so easy. You can see that this photo, whoever did this, absolute legend of a nighttime photographer. This must have been a long exposure somewhere, which is why the water is so nice and creamy and it's got this glow. I don't know what this is about. There must have been something in the foreground that, like, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's a composition. But basically, when you have a nicely taken photo and you get it right in camera, editing it on the computer becomes very easy and much more creative. It's less about fixing things, more about creatively, what do I want to do here? So let's start by fixing the one thing that's really standing out to me, which is that thing. 
And then we've also got some kind of like weird banding going on in here. So I'm going to grab the same healing brush and you can just click and drag it for larger area selection. Something like that. So here's before, here's after, right? First, we're going to fix what needs to be fixed. Then we're going to say creatively, what do we want to do here? Overall, <laughs> this photo is amazing. Like I don't have much to do other than maybe just add a little bit of vibrance. It just depends on the style of the photo that you're going for. We could maybe take our highlights down a little bit, play around with our black point and our shadows. A little clarity, a little texture. Something like that. And then we'll zoom in. And you can see there's like a little bit of grain and noise going on in here, which I'm actually fine with because it's kind of more analog feeling anyways. But if you want to get rid of that, we can go down into our detail panel take our noise reduction up until it goes away. So somewhere around there feels okay. Then we zoom back in, see what else we could do. The photo isn't super sharp right now. So if we zoom way in, hold down alt and take these sliders up, you'll be able to see a lot more what's happening when you adjust the various different things. So I'm gonna take my radius up a little bit my masking up. Now everything that's white when you hold this down, when you're holding down the alt or option key on your keyboard, everything that's white is being sharpened, everything that is black is not being sharpened. So you can see with no masking, everything is being sharpened. So take my masking up, only the buildings are being sharpened. Now only the major lines within the buildings are being sharpened. So I'm just going to dial it in because there's no reason to sharpen the sky when the sky isn't meant to be sharp in the first place. Okay, something like that. And I do want just a little bit more pop in the photo, so we'll add a little dehaze. Here's before, here's after. Pretty subtle, but I like it. Now, if you wanted to, you could add maybe a little bit more color in this section of the sky. A couple ways to do that. First, go to select subject. That was not the right thing. <laughs> Let's go to select sky. Hello, come on. You wait for an undetermined amount of time. And eventually Lightroom says, is this right? And I say, yeah, good job, Lightroom. So we're just going to add some pink to our white balance and a little bit more blue. I found for whatever reason, when you warm up a photo, it tends to wash out the sky. When you cool it down, it tends to add a little bit more color, mostly because the sky tends to be blue. So we're going to make it a little bit more blue, a little bit more pink. And then if we wanted to, we could raise our highlights a little bit and our whites and then lower our shadows, and that's just gonna enhance the contrast that's already in the sky. Just like that. Before, after. And we'll move on. So let's head over to this jungle ruin. First things first, let's just adjust the really obvious things. We're gonna start by straightening this photo out. Okay. And then we're gonna need to adjust the perspective because you can see that it's not quite exactly symmetrical, even though I tried to straighten the horizon, now down here looks a little crooked. So we're gonna go down here to our optics and geometry sections. Where are we? Hello. Minimize that, minimize that. Optics, enable lens correction. That's gonna help a little bit. And then geometry, we should be able to straighten this out. So we could go with auto and see if that'll be about right. Nope, definitely not. So let's undo that. Let's try instead going with guide it. So what we're going to do is we're going to find two straight lines. So we're going to start with the line of the building right here, which should be straight. And then we're going to try a horizontal one. So we'll go with probably this line here should be straight. So Lightroom is going to try based on those measurements to get things straight. Now, since I was a little bit off, didn't do the best job, so we can just adjust it until things look about right. Here's before, here's after. You can see it's closer, it's still not quite right, so I'll just fiddle a little bit longer. I think that's getting a lot closer. If we go back to our crop, we could probably Reset that. 
Okay, before, after. I'm thinking that's closer, so we'll keep rolling with that. Next, these backgrounds really take away, these backgrounds, these buildings in the background really take away from the rest of the image. So I'm going to go up here. I'm going to try select sky, and hopefully Lightroom is going to grab those backgrounds, the buildings as part of the background. Looks like not quite, so we're just going to go down here to where it says add. Select the mask, add, brush. And now we're just going to be able to extend that mask by brushing onto our building here. and our building over here. Something like that. Now we could zoom in, take our time with this, do a better job. This is one area where Lightroom Classic works so much better because unlike Lightroom CC, Lightroom Classic has auto masking and it just makes it a lot easier to get a really nice, effective, accurate mask with stuff like this. But Oh, well, I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. We can kind of bleed over the edges of these branches a little bit. Okay. Let's drag this back into the center here. Go back to our mask. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Take our exposure up. And take our dehaze down. Not too far, because you can notice it looks kind of weird around that, the branches. And we can also just make sure we grab all of this building. Press O to hide or show your mask. Just like that. Okay. So a few pigeons had to die in order us for us to do that, but that's looking a lot better. And then, again, these branches, that mask looks pretty sloppy. So hold Alt on your brush. Remember, that'll toggle to the eraser, and we can erase. We'll just turn our flow down. And just erase a little bit to clean up that mask. Get a few more branches in there. OK. Is it perfect? No, because you can see the building's still kind of in behind the trees here. So, of course, we could go back, keep massaging it. But I think you guys get the point. The easiest way to kind of minimize these buildings in the background is going to be turning our flow down, going in with our brush. Kind of like that. And making sure our texture and our clarity are way down. Okay, for now, we're going to say that's good. For Instagram or something on a small screen, you wouldn't notice. If you're going to make a print, you're going to be a lot more careful with the actual mask itself. Next, we can take our overall exposure up a little bit. Take our highlights up, shadows down, whites up, blacks down. Like that. Adjust our overall exposure, maybe a little bit too far, Ryan. Then we can do some dodging and burning. So there's two ways to do it. One is we just go through, we create a brush mask, and we grab every area that already is kind of in shadow. So all of these door arches, like that, both sides. Okay, so we'd find all of the areas of shadow and we just emphasize it. So then we take the exposure down and basically the areas that were dark are now really dark. That's just gonna add some extra dimension to the photo by doing it. So here's before and here's after, right? You're just sculpting the light. The other way of doing it that's a lot faster is we're gonna create a new mask. We're gonna go with luminance range and we're just gonna grab the shadow areas of the image. So we're gonna go like this and you can see that as I do that, it's only selecting areas of the image that are between zero, like all the way black, and say 10 or 20% brightness. So just the darkest parts of the image. And then this little thing here, if I can grab both of them. There is a feather in here that for some reason, there we go. <laughs> that area right there is the feather and kind of the fall off. So if you want to make it more of a gradual transition, you can. So we're just going to grab the darkest parts of the image. 
kind of the same way as we did manually a second ago. We're going to do just automatically like this. And then we can take our shadows down, exposure down or up. You can see we kind of, kind of sculpt the light that way. So you can take your exposure up. Maybe we want to add some blue to the shadows, make them more magenta, right? We can do all sorts of different things. And do the same thing. We'll do one more, create mask, go to color luminance range. And this time we're just going to grab the highlights of the image. So just the very bright parts. I'm going to take the exposure on those up, maybe a little bit. Highlights up, whites up. And of course, you push this too far, it's going to look ridiculous. Like that. <laughs> but just a little bit, you can add a little more dimension to your photo. Just make sure that when you're doing this, you're adjusting the feather so that it's a little bit more gradual. So let's see if I can grab it. Come on. There we go. That should make it smoother. Like that. So here's before and here's after. Okay. So now it just comes down to what do you want to do with the image stylistically? We can go down to our color mixer. Maybe take some saturation out of the yellows and the greens. Add some saturation to our reds and our browns and our oranges. And then adjust our hue maybe towards red a little bit. That yeah, depends what you're feeling. Something like that. Okay, before, after. I'm going to move on. Lots of different things you could do there, but I'm not super inspired, so we'll keep going. Mr. Giraffe. Okay, a couple things here. First off, really beautiful photo. The giraffe is in nice lighting. It's not super harsh, so we're going to be able to do a lot of different things here. But as I increase the exposure on Mr. Giraffe, the sky is getting blown out. So first things first, let's go over to our adjustment brush. We're going to select the sky. And just like we did in our earlier video, we can take our exposure down. Highlights up, but our shadows and our blacks down. Then add some blue. Maybe even increase the saturation a little bit. Add a little bit of color. And voila, your sky is much more sky. Now you can play around, see what feels right. Sometimes taking the highlights back down will actually be better. Other times, not so much. So just feel out what's right. You want to keep it looking pretty natural still if you can. Okay, so here's before, here's after. Making some progress. Next, let's grab Mr. Giraffe. See what happens when we go to our subject mask. Select subject. Dun, dun, dun. There we go, Mr. Giraffe. So we'll make him, <laughs> hey, look, they think it, the tree is his tail. That's kind of funny. So we'll take the exposure up a little bit, take the contrast down a little bit, and then we can take our blacks down, our whites up. We're basically just adding some pop to Mr. Giraffe, a little saturation maybe. Hue could go slightly towards red. Like that. A little bit of dehaze sometimes is nice. A little clarity, a little texture. Okay, so here's before that. And here's after. See how much he's popping from the background? And by having the giraffe brighter, more saturated, it just makes everything in the entire image look like it has more pop. Okay, so next up, we can do the same thing with this mask with the background. So we're going to duplicate it. Oh, that was the sky mask. Scratch that. We're going to take our subject mask. We're going to duplicate it. And then we're going to press the apostrophe key or the quotation key on our keyboard. Or go down here to invert. Now you can see it selected the background. So we can hold Alt. And sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. OK. <laughs> We're just going to reset the sliders on our adjustment brush. And now we can do whatever we want with the background. So what I like to do, take our texture and our clarity down a little bit. That'll give us even a little bit more background separation. And a little bit of dehaze, maybe. OK, now we can add some contrast. Make sure our shadows are not getting clipped too much. Take our exposure down ever so slightly. Here's before and here's after. Right? Little by little, we're just 
adjusting our image to fit the vision, whatever that happens to be. Now our giraffe looks probably a little bit too bright in this photo, not really blending with the background, so we'll darken him back down. Okay, so here's before and here's after. So, so far, so good. Now we can do some stylistic stuff. We can maybe try and get the sky back a little bit more. We've definitely got some fringing going on. See all that purple? That's called fringing. It's when different edges in the image just refract off the glass of the lens. I don't really understand how it works, but what you want to do is go down to your optics and you should be able to select defringe. See how it has a purple slider? We've got an amount and Lightroom's gonna find it and get rid of it. So without and with. From a distance, you can't really tell much at all, but when you zoom in, it makes a difference. Okay, we can actually expand that because it almost looks like we're getting some fringing around the blues as well. So by expanding it, I can kind of dial it in. Okie doke. So giraffe, progress being made. Next up, it's just a question of what do you want to do to really emphasize the image, make it more beautiful? What things do you want to exaggerate? What do you want to minimize? So I'm going to grab a brush. And I'm just going to paint on the grass just around the giraffe a little bit to make it slightly sharper and pop because right now it feels like the giraffe is too separated from the rest of the photo. So let's go in here. We're going to grab just these kind of little clumps of flowers. I don't know what they are, but I'm grabbing them. And then maybe even this tree stalk itself. A couple branches. I'm being really sloppy with my brush because I'm not going to do any extreme adjustments. When you're not adjusting it in a super extreme way, you don't have to be as careful. Okay. Increase the highlights a little bit. Whites up a little. You can see it's very subtle and that's because my flow was down. If I were to take my flow all the way up and do 100% opacity, that effect is a lot stronger. So again, here's before that and after. Very subtle, just making a few more things pop out. And last of all, maybe we want to add a little bit of texture and interest to the background. So we're going to grab our brush. Just select my trees back here. I think if we made them a little darker, we're going to add more contrast overall to the image. So let's try. Let's just add some contrast. Take our blacks down a little bit. Not too, too much. Somewhere around there. So by doing that, see the sky before and after. The sky hasn't changed, but now the sky by contrast seems brighter and seems to pop more because the background itself, the trees are darker. So the darks against the lights, that contrast makes it seem more poppy. So before, after, and then you can do some stylistic stuff if you want. Like we could desaturate our greens and our yellows. We could maybe go for more of like a African desert vibe by taking our greens and our yellows, the hue more towards orange. You could desaturate the blues maybe, if that's what you're feeling, or take the blues towards teal. The world is your oyster. I think I'm gonna actually just get the blues way down like that. Saturation around there. Greens can stay saturated, that's fine. I'm just not feeling like the blues are really helping the image, so I'm going to take the saturation down on them and the luminance up. So after all that work we did, saving the sky, I just got rid of it anyways because <laughs> I thought just the colors didn't really add to the image overall. So we could even go back to our sky mask here, take the exposure back up, just like that. Okay, so here's our image before and after. Tag me at Signature Edits Co. and share what you came up with. Now, out of curiosity, let's just copy those settings. Command-C or Control-C on your keyboard. I'm going to paste them with Command-V on a Mac. I think that's Control-P on a PC. You can see that 
this is why presets, oftentimes people buy them, they get really confused. They're like, these don't work on my images. What's up with the presets? It's not the preset that's the fault. It's just the fact that every single image is different and unique. And so you're going to have to edit it fresh in some situations. Unless the photo has the same lighting, the same colors, the same camera style, whatever, you're going to find that more often than not, presets are not going to be perfect. But once you get the white balance and the lighting dialed in, things just work. Okay, let's go to versions. We're going to go to original. Gonna reset. Close that. So let's do the same kind of concept, but this time a lot faster. Let's grab our select sky. Take our exposure down a little bit. We're gonna add some nice blue to the photo. There we go. Emphasize our highlights and our whites, bring those way up, bring our shadows and our blacks down. Somewhere around there. Okay, sky looks good, giraffe, not so much, but we're making progress one thing at a time. Now we're gonna go to create new mask, select subject. Now, Mr. Giraffe just doesn't look very saturated and wow, not the best auto mask job, but we'll go to add and brush and we're just gonna add his neck. Beautiful, just beautiful. Now, we can take our exposure up, contrast up, whites up, maybe even the shadows up a little bit. Now this looks silly right now, but the key is we wanna just brighten things up to start with, see what we're working with, we can dial it in as we go. So I'm gonna warm the temperature a little bit, and then it looks a little green to me, his skin tone, <laughs> his giraffe tone. So we're gonna take this up somewhere around there. So here's before, after, and then we're just gonna dial things back. Hello, of course, sometimes it just doesn't wanna work. We're gonna dial things back, Mr. Giraffe, that's the sky. Undo that. Let's label these so we don't get so confused. Double click and you can type in giraffe. Hopefully I spelled giraffe right, might have two R's, I'm not sure. Something like that. Now, sometimes taking the clarity down and then taking your texture or your dehaze up can be really helpful. They kind of smooth each other out. A little bit of sharpness. We can play with the hue a little bit. And then I definitely need him brighter. He still looks too dark. So go like that to start. I want some saturation. Okay, so that's not bad. Here's before and here's after. Probably made them too red. We can fix that later. Now let's go to our oranges. Take the luminance up, yellows, luminance up, reds, luminance, you guessed it, up. Okay, we can take our saturation up as well, particularly in those reds, and then adjust our hue so that the red is more of like an orange than a red. Okay. There's Mr. Giraffe before and after. Obviously, we've still got some stuff going on with like some banding around his ears. It just looks like we've pushed it too far. So we could grab our sky or just grab our blues, take the luminance up a little bit. Or down. I'm not sure which in this case. <laughs> there you go. Is it better? I don't know. Is it different? Yes. <laughs> and last but not least, we have Bambi's cousin, Bambo. So we're going to start off by going down here, getting rid of Mr. Fly. Well, thanks, Ryan. You're welcome, Bambo. It's been a long day. We're going to go to our crop, make him a little bit more centered in this photo. And then we have to decide what do we want to do. Now, what's kind of interesting is his natural color is so gray. It almost looks like I've desaturated it. But let's see what we can come up with. Let's do a black and white just for fun. Now, the way that I like to do black and white is to take the saturation down. And the reason I do that rather than switch it to black and white mode is I just find the colors. You can do some more interesting things. So we could take our saturation way down like this and then take our saturation up in the oranges and in the reds of our color panel and then down across everything else. 
And then what you're left with is like a 99% black and white photo with just like this tiny pop of color that you don't even necessarily see, you just feel it. So just a little, not quite that much, somewhere around there. Okay, so here's before, here's after. Pretty basic, right? And then we can do different things. So if you wanna go like really hardcore, really gritty, you could grab a tone curve, make a nice S curve on here. Maybe even do an inverted color would be kind of cool. Do one of those. Bambo, the horror movie by Disney. Something like that. And then I'm going to go down and look for my texture. Do, 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 do. Take my texture up a little bit. Clarity way up. DA is way up. Vignette way up. I'm just messing around. You can see that this is pretty awful so far. So I'm probably going to wind up taking it in a different direction. But sometimes you'd be surprised when you're just messing around the things that you discover. It's like, oh, I didn't know those two tools could work together that way. So maybe if we take our texture down, but our clarity all the way up. Or maybe we try it the other way, and we take our clarity all the way down and our texture all the way up. We just see the way that things work together, and you'll learn by doing it. I'm a big fan of learn by doing when you can. Okay, I'm thinking something like that. And then what I'm going to do is take my highlights way back, my contrast way down, and I'm going to go to select subject, see if Lightroom's good at it. Perfect. Okay, now I can take my subject, make it quite a bit brighter in the frame, add some clarity. Smooth things out. Like that. Take my overall exposure down. And then if you want more texture, you want more contrast, whatever, you can just go back to your tone curve. Take it down. Just depends what you like. I'm thinking somewhere around there. It's kind of interesting. He kind of pops off the screen. Here's before. Here's after. A million different ways you could treat it. I'm no amazing, perfect Michelangelo. I'm just showing you some different techniques that you could try yourself. So share what you come up with. Tag me at Signature Edits Co. That kind of does it for today's and this week's and this particular Lightroom tutorial. Hopefully you learned something in here. If you did, can you do me a favor? Can you share whatever it is in the comments below so that other people can learn from what you learned? And I would love to see your own photos. Tag me at Signature Edits Co. Like this video if it was helpful. Dislike it if it wasn't. That's cool. We'll have a conversation. I will see you in the next video. In the meantime, create something awesome. Peace.